All right, today what we're going to do, as I said last time, is do a counter model. Um, and so what do we need for a counter model? We need an argument that is not actually true and leaves us with an open branch on our tree. So I have picked an argument for us, which will not be true, which will leave us with an open branch, which will allow us to draw a counter model for this argument. So this argument, as you can see in yellow, actually has no premises. It's just a conclusion. I conclude that square P or Q, then square P or square Q. Now, as I've already said, this is actually not going to be true. It actually doesn't matter what the premises are. This conclusion just will never be true, which is why we're only dealing with a conclusion. So we have to draw up our tree. We have no premises. All we have is a conclusion. And remember, when we're drawing a tree, we always do sigma, not A, where sigma is the set of our premises and A is our conclusion. Since we have no premises, we'll just be negating this conclusion in our tree, and that'll be enough for us to draw a full tree. So if we negate this conclusion, let's let's put our little tilde and then put everything in brackets. So that way the tilde governs the entire conclusion. Square P or square Q. And let's assign this to world zero. And there we go. We have begun our tree. So let's distribute this tilde, right? Remember, if we have tilde and a conditional, right? Let's say we have tilde, like we have not, if A, then B, that becomes A and not B. So our antecedent is true. So we have square P or Q in zero. And then we have not square P or square Q in zero. Let's close our brackets first. There we go. All right, there we go. We've built with that. The next thing we can do is send this tilde out um, in the most recent thing we wrote, and that'll leave us with not square P in zero and not square Q in zero by De Morgan's. So we have not square P in zero, and we have not square Q in zero. So we are done with that. Now, if we push our tilde through the square for both of these, we could say diamond not p in zero and diamond not q in zero. And we are quickly running out of room and are going to have to move this to the right. So now that we have our diamonds, what we can do is say that zero relates to some arbitrary world, which we'll name, and then show that not p and not q are true in those worlds. So first what I'll do is say 0 relates to 1, and not p is true in 1. Now remember, when, we're, when we say that 0 relates to something for our diamond rule of inference, it has to be a world that does not yet appear on this branch. So for our diamond not q and 0, we cannot have 0 relate to 1 and have not q and 1. We'll say 0 relates to 2, and then we will move our tree over here. And we will have what we have. We'll have not Q appearing in world two. So we are done with that now. What do we have left to do? Okay, now what we can do, we can go back to the second thing we wrote square P or Q in zero. Since zero relates to one and zero relates to two, we now know that P or Q is true in one and P or Q is true in two. So we have P or Q in one. And P or Q in two came from the second thing we wrote. We're done with that. All right, we are almost out of here because now the only things upon which we can apply rules of inference are the two most recent things we wrote. So we'll say P in one, Q in one. There you go. Um, P in one, this branch will close because if we look over here, we have a not P in one. So that's going to close. Q in one is still fine. Uh, so we're done with this, and now we'll apply the rule of inference for P or Q in world 2. So we'll say P is in world 2, Q is in world 2. This branch will actually close because we have not Q in 2 right here. But this branch right here stays open because there's no contradictions, and now there's no other rules of inference left for us to apply. So now, how do we construct our counter model? First thing we do is we look at all of the words uh, all the worlds that exist on our open branch. 
So on our open branch, right, like this one right here, if we follow it, we have, ooh, we go all the way back to the whole tree, circle that whole thing. Yeah, let's just pretend that's that. The worlds that exist, I'm going to erase that because that looks ugly. The worlds that exist are worlds 0, 1, and 2. So let's write that down. Say we have world 1. Oh, sorry, we have world 0. We have world 1. And we have world 2. Now let's write the relations that exist on that branch. So if we look at that branch, we see that 0 relates to 1 and 0 relates to 2. And that those are the only relations we have. So let's draw out those relations. Now the last thing for us to do is just write the statements that exist in those worlds. So in world 1, what do we have is true. Um, in world 1, we see that Q is the case. And we also have P or Q. There you go. Um, now in world two, what we can do, what do we have in world two? We see that P or Q is the case and P. So P, P or Q. So that's what we have so far. And if we keep looking at our branch, I think I'm missing something. I can see we also have not P is the case in world one. I want to make sure we cover that. And in world two, we also have not Q. We have not Q. So that's the case. There we go. And I think that covers everything that we wrote down on our tree. So this is our counter model, right? And since we have an open branch for our original argument up here, this counter model should allow us to explain why this original statement right here is false in world zero. Now, the way you would argue this is with words written down. Um, I'm probably just going to write little bullets and notes because we don't have much room on the screen. Basically, you have to show why our counter model makes that conclusion false, right? So let's consider why is the conclusion false or when will the conclusion be false? The conclusion is false. It's a, it's a conditional statement when the um, antecedent is true and the conclusion is false. So we need antecedent true for this specific case antecedents true and consequent false right so when will that be the case let's just let's just mark off this area for us so the antecedent being not i mean being square p or q right what does that mean it means p or q must be true in every world that world zero accesses if we look at our counter model, we see that P or Q is true in 1 and 2, which are all the worlds that 0 accesses. So square P or Q is true. Square P or Q in 0 is true. We have that. Now we want the consequence to be false. So we have a disjunction, square P or square Q, which means both square P and square Q need to be false. If either one of them is true, that consequent will be true, and that means we messed up somewhere, but that will not be the case. So, again, you would write this down in like a full paragraph in English words. Square P is false. Why? Because world one, not P exists. So square P, false, because, and I'll just write not P in world one. For similar reasons, square Q is false because zero relates to world two and not Q is the case in world two. Thus, square P or square Q in world zero is false. So now that we've made the, now that for our conclusion, which is a conditional, we've shown that the antecedent is true and the conclusion is false by our counter model. The entire argument will be false, and that's the counter model. So that's how you do it. You basically just have an open branch. You create this visual demonstration with your world's relations and everything that exists in those worlds. And then you explain why, through this counter model, your argument will be invalid. So if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you learned something.